Greetings, everyone. This is Steam Team Read WK, CC Trainer Ling, here to bring you another retro review from past seasons of The Loud House. In today's video, we look at the Season 4 episode that I once considered the best Rita episode until Season 5 came along, and it's nearly perfect in its own way. Today's episode is titled, Right and Wrong. First, we'll discuss the plot, and then my thoughts and critiques with my final score. So, let's get right into it. <laughs> Get it? The episode begins with Rita telling her husband that she plans to apply for a full-time job at the Royal Woods Gazette, seeing that her novel is finally finished. Color me surprised. She gets a call from Jesse Hiller, the chief editor, and she's told she'd be the perfect candidate to write for their column on perfect parenting. When Jesse says she wants to conduct an in-person interview at the Loud House to see her new columnist in action, Rita bribes her kids into acting perfect in front of her new boss in exchange for a celebration dinner at Jean Juan's French Mex Buffet if she gets the gig. Their plan works perfectly, and Jesse hires Rita. While the mom gives perfect parenting advice, she nearly gets caught by some of her readers on what it means to not be a perfect parent. When the kids remind Rita of their agreement about being rewarded with a dinner at Jean Juan's, she takes them to the restaurant in the middle of the afternoon in the hopes that no one will see her. However, she spots Jesse and a few of her co-workers nearby, and the antics from the kids get their attention. Rita comes clean about not being a perfect mother, and that parenting is very hard, but it's something she really loves. Although Jessie initially fires her new writer, Jessie's co-workers defend Rita by agreeing with what she had to say. Jessie rehires Rita and tells her to forget being perfect, but instead be authentic. Well, that concludes the plot of the episode, so now we come to my thoughts and critiques. Have you ever been in one of those situations as a kid where your parents tell you that if you behave well in front of others, they'll give you some kind of reward for not acting out? Yeah, that's pretty much this episode in a nutshell. And when you approach it from the perspective of a parent, it's hard not to relate to Rita and her desire to come off as the perfect parent. Obviously, she's not perfect, and there are plenty of past episodes that prove it. However, in spite of what many fans have to say about her and her husband, she's really not as terrible as you think, although that greatly depends on the episode. Most of the time, her heart is in the right place, and she's firm but fair with how she handles things, even if some approaches are not as agreeable as others. Still, she's never given a reason, at least to me, to make anyone believe she's quote, the worst cartoon mom ever, end quote. I can name much worse, but that's beside the point. Rita admits there are days where things run smoothly without any mishap, and then there are days where it's more than she can handle, just like the episode Rita Her Right. But unlike the aforementioned episode from season 3 where she becomes a low-key criminal to get out of her parental responsibilities, she tries to present herself as the ideal mother who can handle 11 kids, and she gives the advice to back up such a claim. Arguably, you can say she's hypocritical for giving advice she's clearly not following herself, but here's the real question. Is her advice truly perfect, or does it come off as more practical? I guess that depends on who you're talking to. The people who approached Rita, including that homework harpy woman, were complimenting her on the advice she was giving. As far as we were concerned, no one was saying her advice was wrong, but they also didn't say it was perfect either. Harpy certainly wasn't telling Rita the advice about having fun when homework is done didn't help at all. If anything, I would say the advice Rita was giving her readers was more practical and workable for parents such as them. I highly doubt anyone else in the city has to raise 11 kids. But speaking of those 11 kids, I do have a few things to say about them. Aside from Rita looking super fine as a housewife, her kids did a good job of pulling off their little tribute to the Von Trapp children from The Sound of Music, with the matching outfits and song. Speaking of which, Our Amazing Mother is not that bad of a tune. Let the record show Luna can summon an entire orchestra from just her guitar because reasons. They may have only acted like this because they knew they were going to get rewarded if everything went according to plan, but what kids wouldn't want to come through for their own mom? It shows they care enough to help her out after everything she's done for them over the years. It may have been dishonest, but the ends justified the means, and their mom was very grateful for their help. Now, given every past episode ever, these kids are not in any way perfect. They even admit that early in the episode, and as we see later on, 
they couldn't be more right. I know some fans complain about how the kids were acting rowdy in the grocery store, in the car at Flips, and even at Jean Juan's. I mean, can you really blame Rita for wanting to pretend to be Flips' sister Flo and not wanting to be seen with a bunch of out-of-control kids when she's supposed to be living up to her perfect parenting column? Actually, there's a reason for why she acted the way she did, but I'll get to that when I talk about Jesse Hiller a little later in the video. Anyway, say what you want about any of her kids, but here's the thing to remember. They're not adults, they're kids. What kids don't act up in public? That's what the episode was trying to illustrate when it came to Rita's conflict. Much like what she said towards the end, there are days she can handle the rowdiness and days when it's tougher than usual. We've seen this many times in the past, where the kids are well-behaved one moment and then they're acting erratic the next. I don't subscribe to the idea of any one of the kids being out of character because these kids are exactly what they are kids being kids, and they're going to misbehave like kids normally would. Still, some of them were willing to try covering for their mom when they saw Jesse by pretending to be Flip's kids, so that's a subtle sign of maturity, if you really want to call it that. Sure, maybe they could have tried to be a little more orderly after helping their mom land a job, but honestly, what kid is going to keep that kind of charade and promise forever? I certainly can't name one. She would have been found out eventually, so trying to hide the true nature of her living conditions was only going to work for so long. Again, they're not perfect and they never will be. And that's what Jesse had to find out. So now we come to Miss Hiller. Although I did get a few laughs out of how she talks in newspaper lingo like stop the presses or this just in like it's part of a normal conversation, I thought it was a little odd how she tried to dismiss Rita as a bad parent when she outright says she doesn't have kids herself. If you think about it, she was the one who caused Rita to get apprehensive about her job. The ad in the paper was about penning a weekly parenting column, but it was Jesse who said perfect parenting on the phone and that caught Rita off guard since she already knew she wasn't perfect. This mother felt pressured into living up to the status of the perfect parent if that's what it meant to have this job. That pretty much explains why this story went down the way it did. Jesse was the one who set an unrealistic expectation for anyone who wanted the job, and her firing Rita for not being perfect was grossly uncalled for. It makes you wonder if she would have refused to hire anyone who had the slightest imperfection as a parent. Probably. Either way, who exactly was Jesse to judge anyone about how proper or improper someone is at raising children when she doesn't have to walk in those kinds of shoes herself? On top of that, as the chief editor of the Gazette, she wasn't getting complaints from anyone saying Rita's parenting advice was no good. So why exactly was she getting mad about someone being an imperfect parent when clearly the advice being printed in the paper was not backfiring? Maybe she was more furious at the fact Rita deliberately lied to her face about having everything under control and that her children are not that well organized just so she could get the job. I wouldn't take too kindly to being lied to either. No matter the reason, she still allowed Rita to keep her job at the Gazette thanks to her co-workers who actually have kids and agree parenting is not as easy as it seems. If I were to take a guess, she would probably end up changing that column from perfect parenting to practical parenting, and you can't be more authentic than that. Overall, this episode leaves viewers with one big question. Does this make Rita look like a bad parent? Honestly, not at all. Granted, I can't say this episode is perfect, but it comes fairly close to being so for someone like Rita Loud, and you have to approach the episode from her perspective. Even if a non-mother like Jesse Hiller was the one who indirectly put pressure on Mrs. Loud to be a flawless parent, there was a lesson this newspaper editor needed to learn, and it's a lesson Rita had to be upfront about as well. The lesson is that as a parent, you can talk a big game about claiming to be the best in the world and you can give all the advice you want but at the end of the day you have to admit to yourself that taking on the job of being a mother or father for that matter is going to have its easy days and hard days the latter being much more common when you're trying to control a lot of children regardless of age the way the kids conducted themselves in this episode the way rita conducted herself and how things ultimately worked out for this mother of 11 is as authentic as you can get for 
this series. There are days when the Lao kids are calm and the parents have everything organized, and then there are days when they're being rambunctious and the parents can't keep up. So honestly, there's nothing too unusual or inconsistent about the highs and lows of the chaos in this family. The story was played out the way it was intended in an effort to drive home the moral on the realities of parenting. And just remember, if Rita was really a bad parent, her kids would be way worse than what we currently see. You can let your imagination set the scene for that one. In short, no parent is perfect, but they can always try. With that said, I give Right and Wrong a 9 out of 10. Well, folks, that concludes my review of Right and and wrong. While some call this episode terrible and or forgettable, I see it as a highly underrated episode from season 4, and with the kind of lesson we learn at the end, you have to at least give Rita a little credit for trying to be the best she can be. Can any of you out there handle 11 kids and not make a few mistakes along the way? Feel free to prove me wrong! So what did you guys think of it? Love it? Hate it? Something you would add? Change? Keep it as it is? Let me know in the comments below, and make sure to subscribe to this channel for the latest Loud House content. That's going to do it for me. I'll catch you guys for the next video, but until then, this is Steam Team Rita WK, CC Trainer Ling, signing off. Peace out, home slices.